Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to install Umbrel OS in VirtualBox on my Windows machine. I'll just kind of take you through the steps to be able to install it and play around with it. If you're not familiar with Umbrel, it is a operating system that is geared towards easy self-hosting with its own app store that lets you just one click install server applications such as Image or Nextcloud. So it's a pretty nice looking OS for users that don't wanna to be too technical, like in the command line and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and just uh, install it in VirtualBox and play around. Let's do Umbrel OS download. And let's just check out their GitHub page. Okay, install Umbrel OS in a VM. So let's check that out. And then we are going to download the latest Umbrel OS USB installer. So that looks great. So let's click on that. All right, let's open that in the folder. As you can see, this isn't the first time I've downloaded this image. So I'm gonna copy this and move it out of my downloads. And I'm just gonna paste it in here. So let's open up VirtualBox and we are going to create a new machine. So I'm gonna call this Umbrel, um, and I'll say YouTube, and then I'm going to select that ISO image to install this. And we're going to say the type is Linux, and then let's change this to Oracle Linux, 64-bit, I'm gonna hit next. And then we're gonna give it a little bit of memory. Uh, I've got plenty to spare. So I'm gonna give it a couple processors. And then we are going to hit enable EFI because this is a special OS. Uh, give it a virtual disk. So it's not pre-allocated. It'll use the disk dynamically, which is very nice. And then we'll hit finish. And I like to just kind of take a look at the boot process first. So we're going floppy, optical, hard disk, it should be fine. After we install the operating system, we're gonna change this to be the hard disk. We wanna boot it from the hard disk, not from the optical drive. Uh, we don't really need any video memory because the OS doesn't have its own display. It'll launch a web server and then we can just access the web server from our own computer on the network. I will go ahead and just put this on the bridge adapter. That way I can be sure that our virtual machine is gonna be accessible from the network. So let's hit okay and let's go ahead and try starting it up. Okay, so it says select the uh, storage device by number to install Umbrel OS. We're gonna select the hard disk, not the CD-ROM. So that's gonna be one. And we'll just sit here and wait for it to uh, install the operating system. Okay, and we're done. We have it installed. It says press any key to shut down. And remember to remove the USB drive before turning the device back on. So I'll press any key to shut it down like it asked me to. And boom, power off. Okay, now we need to remove that installation media. So let's click on settings. And the first thing I'm gonna do is change the boot order because I want it to boot from the hard disk. And then the next thing we're gonna do is go to the storage, click on our installer disk, which we have loaded in there. And then we'll just say remove the disk from the drive. We don't need it anymore. Hit okay. And let's boot it up again. And now that we have the virtual machine running, let me just go to a browser here and go to umbrella.local and here is the uh, virtual machine. So this is running a web interface that I can access via umbrella.local and then now I can just go ahead and hit start. I can create my account. So I'm gonna create a user account. And then now the OS is ready to go. So this is where I can um, install apps with one click. As you can see, we've got image here and Nextcloud. Let's see what else we have here. So we've got, this is the app store. Can go into settings.
So we have some stats on our server itself. Um, and then if I need to open up a terminal, I can do that here. So run custom commands in Umbrella OS or within an app. So if I do that, so if I just want to run commands within the OS, I can use this. Uh, this is pretty cool too, because you can run commands within the container of an app that you install. So if I go into any more tutorials on Umbrella, then I'll, I'll check that out. But I'll just show you the, the terminal real quick. So this creates a terminal in, um, in the, the user folder here. So if I did cd slash, um, I'm at the uh, the base of the base folder. Now, if you do install apps with the one click, let me just quickly show you where the app data is going to be located. So this is going to be in the home folder and it's going to be in the umbrella folder. Here you can see that there's another umbrella folder. So let's CD into that. And then we have the app data folder. So if I go into that, I don't have anything in here, but if I do like a one click install for image, then it's going to create basically like the Docker folder, like within this app data folder and have your assets folder and your database mount right there in that app data folder. So that's nice. You have kind of a tangible view of the actual database and your assets so that you can back them up as needed. So let me just go ahead and exit out of the terminal. Pretty easy to do. What else can we see? CPU, memory, storage, and we have a home screen. Pretty cool operating system. I uh, just wanted to show you how to load it into VirtualBox so you can play around with it. If you actually use this operating system, let me know in the comments and let me know what applications you run or how you like to use it. Um, if you want any tutorials on installing applications such as Image that I've done lots of other tutorials on, uh, let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to, to go and do that. I'll see you in the next one.